Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Caitlin, and today we are continuing the 100 Dragon Challenge. So, I know a lot of you messaged me asking what I was going to do for the 69th uh, Dragon episode with some uh, interesting recommendations that I feel would make me get demonetized on YouTube. <laughs> so, uh, all you dirty minds out there, you're too funny. But, uh, what I'm doing today is the next Zodiac, which would be Pisces. I thought this worked really well because it's usually the two swirling fish is how you uh, draw them or picture them in like their physical form. I don't know where that sentence went. Anyway, you have the two swirling uh, fish, which reminded me of the number 69. And I know it's not like what the symbol per se looks like for uh, the actual Zodiac symbol, but I'm like, this works, I think pretty well for this number, and I don't know, I thought I was fun and creative with it, so let's do a Pisces dragon. So when I was first thinking about doing this, I was thinking about doing two separate dragons swirling around each other, um, but I thought this would be a really fun opportunity to do another two-headed dragon, because I think the last time I did a two-headed dragon was back in the... Oh my god, what was it even for? It was a it was a black and white zebra looking dragon. I don't remember what the prompt was for it. Um, but I think that's the last time I did a two-headed dragon. And it has been it has been a long while. And I thought this was a really fun opportunity to do a multi-headed one. Because we don't really get them too often. I usually stick to like one-headed, um, maybe multi-limb, multi-wing, but usually not multi-headed. So with Pisces. I just couldn't pass up the opportunity to do this for that one. And with that, I wanted to make sure that this creature also had a lot of fish elements to it. So I took uh, inspiration kind of from a couple of fish ideas. Um, one of them was like a beta fish. I wanted really cool, flowy, big fins all over this creature and some really pretty colors as well. I know beta fish come in so many different colors, but for this one, I just couldn't get the ideas of like purples and blues out of my head. So I kind of had that in my head for the long term for this one. Um, but with the beta fish as kind of the primary inspiration, I was like, all right, I want to have the big fins on the back, add some really cool like spinage on its uh, like on a crest on its head and then have some of those like bigger fin looking ears uh, on the side of the heads as well. And then I really wanted um, like kind of a big, I guess this one looks more like a butterfly koi. Um, the main, I don't know what you call them, the front fins. It's not like the arms, but it's not the dorsal fins because I feel that's like the side or the back or something. I don't know much about fish anatomy, but the main big fins, I wanted them to also feel like a butterfly koi or like it probably still similar to a beta fish, just having them big and flowy and really cool looking, something like that. That's at least what I was thinking for the design overall. And uh, I really like how this pose turned out. I really wanted to highlight both of the heads and show them kind of interacting. I went back and forth on if I wanted the pose to look like um, like six and nine, you know, like having them kind of weaving by or around each other with the heads. And I was like, I don't know if that works super well in this piece because it would kind of make the heads almost look like um, pretzeled in a way. Uh, I, I think I could have figured it out, but I wanted to make sure that you could see both of them and how they connected to the torso. Um, and just kind of make them look like they're flowing through the water without making them look like uncomfortable or in a weird position. I just, I wanted it to look natural and like fluid without making them look really rigid and in like a really odd and uncomfortable position. And I want to make sure to have enough room uh, for the fins and kind of showing the longer flowing tail uh, that goes around the creature. So after the initial line art was done, I went through and added a little bit more thicker line work um, on some of the fins and the heads because it felt like 
with all the twisting and turning of the tail and the other like main fin wing in the background. Um, it was just a lot of details kind of getting lost amongst each other. And I wanted to make sure you could see what was uh, the primary focus or what was closer to the viewer, like the heads of the creatures or the fins in front of the other parts of the body. So I wanted to add at least a little bit of dimension to go with this one. So you could see the difference between what was like the tail in the background compared to like the foreground body elements. I just didn't want them all to blend together. And that's always a great trick to help things kind of pop out and be on a different dimension than other parts of the drawing. So next up was color. So like I said earlier, I was thinking about doing some purples and blues, but then I kind of sat there for a minute and struggled a little bit with where I wanted to go with it because I didn't want it only to be purples and blues. Um, so I chatted with a friend and uh, they recommended adding maybe some like reds or yellows. And I'm like, oh, that's a great idea. Um, keep it all in kind of the violet and blue spectrum, um, but then add a pop of yellow to make a little bit of differentiation to all those cool colors. And now it's time to jump in and start the colors. So I think the one thing that I didn't really like as much for this uh, creature was how the fins turned out. I think they're okay, but I was hoping, I don't, I don't know, like, I don't know if it was just I should have planned it a little better or tested it, but I felt the transition from the blue to the yellow ended up being a little bit muddier than I wanted. Um, I was trying to blend them a little bit more. I knew that there was a chance that they wouldn't blend, you know, perfectly because they're just such different colors and mixing those two together would potentially lead to a muddy color. But when it actually happened, I'm like, well, great. That's kind of, kind of, sort of really muddy. <laughs> so I think that's my one major critique on this one is just it looked it didn't blend super well in terms of like the blues meeting the yellow but since i did it in one spot i had to keep it up and keep it consistent throughout the rest so yeah i basically continued the yellows and the blues throughout all of the back and ear spines and then i wanted to keep it consistent throughout the fins um later on with the bigger fins though i had learned my lesson <laughs> um and kind of changed it up for that one i guess i could have also changed it for the main back fin as well, but I just wanted to keep those all consistent and make the main wing fins a different color overall. Um, I just, I don't know. I, I think I'm being a little too critical. I know it is a little muddy, but I still think it looks pretty good overall. And I really like the color choices for this piece and this creature. I guess one other thing I noticed here as well, I mean, I don't think I need to always point out my errors in my drawings, but I just noticed I didn't put the yellow band from the other head on this second head. So <laughs> we're just gonna ignore that. Oh, here, this is the justification. That yellow band is on the inside of the neck only. <laughs> it's not on the outside of the neck. So the left head doesn't have the yellow band because you just can't see it. There we go. Okay, never mind. not a mistake. Totally intentional, 100%. Just ignore it. It's totally fine. Don't worry about it. Okay, so now it was time to finally jump in to these larger wing fins. And I thought it'd be really cool to have just kind of um, random striping pattern. I really wanted to put some red on these wings. And then I was like, oh, here we go. Now I can add the yellow and like having the yellow against the red ends up not looking very muddy, especially if they don't, if they accidentally run into each other, it's not gonna make a muddy color. Um, so I really like the edge of the wings being the yellow and then the center band 
being uh, this red color. And then I started with the body color purple, and then I tried to transition it into more of the bluish color that's on the fins to try to transition between the two. And also my purple was totally running out of ink, but we won't talk about that. So we made the wings more of the blue from the fins. And uh, then it was time to work on the back fin. And I mean, I could have I could have made that more like the wings, but now that I'm looking at it, I guess I it was good that I picked it to look like the uh, the crests on the back of the head anyway, because then we have another wing behind that. So it could have looked a little confusing on what was wing, what was crest. Um, but yeah, one critique, I would change those little muddy bits on the different fins. And then I added a little bit of patterning uh, to the wing. And looking back, I do think I could have or I do think I could have, that's a sentence, guys. I think I could have added some really fun patterning to different parts of the body or along um, maybe the neck or towards the end by the tails. Uh, but I think just the little hit of the pattern on the wing fins, I really liked as well. And it just kind of added a little bit of diversity to the pattern and the look overall. So, I mean, I'm still very happy with how this turned out and I hope that you Pisces out there also really like it. <laughs> I know the Zodiac ones are kind of hit and miss. Some people are like, oh yeah, 100%, like that's my sign and I love it. And sometimes people are like, meh, maybe not 100% to my sign, but I had a lot of fun. And uh, I think there's a lot of ways you can interpret these Zodiac dragons. You know, there's just so many options you can go off of. The uh, element that the Zodiac is associated with, you could go off of different descriptions of the Zodiac. Lots of really cool things that you can draw inspiration from. But speaking of uh, inspiration, let's look at your guys' entries for last week's Ghost Dragon. You guys had a lot of really cute ones. Some of you guys did more like cute and fun dragons and others went for more of a creepy look, but overall amazing work, guys. Mighty Kamarai, I really like the combination of your bone and like cool ectoplasmy looking green ghost. Really love that. And a normal ADN, I had to highlight this one because yours is just so cool and like cryptid looking. Really awesome work. Perfectly creepy for a ghost dragon. So if you guys would like to enter uh, your Pisces dragon, make sure to post it on Instagram or Twitter with the hashtag KM100Dragons, or you can join my Discord where we have a server where you can upload them to there as well. I collect it from all of those different places. Um, but yeah, I would love to see what your guys' interpretation of the Pisces dragon would be. But anyway, thank you guys so much for stopping by and checking out this video. And if you aren't already, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button, join our little nerdy community of uh, monster and dragon enthusiasts, and uh, also hit a like if you like this video and like the 100 Dragon series. But anyway, thank you guys again so much, and I will see you all next time. Bye, everybody.